or something like that. Hola. Hey. Yay, getting out of biker dinner. Biker dinner? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't either. Sounds awful. But Etiquette's excited about not doing it, so I'm excited for oh, About Etiquette not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> A kid as well. I don't know about y'all, but it's been kind of a day. It's been a weird day. Yeah. Yeah. Weird is correct. I forgot to bring a bag. Do you have your trash can over there? I do. I'm not even too working on that. You don't have to. Damn it. We're always late for our own stream. We're not as late as we usually are. We're almost on time tonight. What? I asked you about a trash can. Oh. <laughs> you found mine. Just sitting here waiting. That's fine. I had this thing plugged in, you know, while we were eating it, so it didn't charge, so. Your pen? Yeah, pen. You didn't check to make sure it was charging? I did. It said it was charging, but it apparently it didn't, so, mm -hmm. man. My doubts. <laughs> so many doubts. Cats are sneaky bastards. It's part of their charm, from what I gather. So we've been told. The new, I don't know if we've shown people. I don't know who they have either. Mm -hmm. Borb. Goldfinch Borb. Borb. I love the way the light just does its thing and makes it look a little. Mm -hmm. I am also just old. How's everybody doing? Yeah, apparently everybody's tired. Yeah. Some intense music you got going on there. It is. It's very Versus intense for my tired state of mind. Castlevania. It says a person who's like just playing like Mongolian death metal. That. A few minutes ago. It was pretty great, actually. Admit it, you're excited I found it. It was pretty good. I just you're gonna listen to it later. Probably. Uh-huh. Really? What? <laughs> what the hell? Hey, Jim. So Dane claims that he plugged in his pencil, but, um, apparently not. So we're waiting on charging. Yeah, 35% is good enough. You could leave it charged while people decide what they want. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Now, speakers. <laughs> like a pheasant. I first read that as like a pheasant. And I was just like, How do you pheasants don't use things? speakers. <laughs> You're all like silly etiquette. <laughs> Seen several of those in the wild. Yeah, not as many as I would have expected. But um, yeah, a few. I feel like there's not as much wildlife as there used to be when we were kids. Oh no, are we all tinny and raspy? We sound like little robots. We probably sound amazingly bad. 
worse so, than usual. Anyone that wants to get Dane started on drawing something, feel free to throw out some ideas. Ash was like, Dane's just sitting here not doing anything and it bothers me. Basically. <laughs> well, I just, you know, everybody just wants to talk. We can do it, but, you know. We can. It's true. Yeah. We've been known to do that. Right. But, you know, just in case they wanted you to draw something. You can. Go for it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, if no one else has one, Spaceman Fishing. Okay. Okay. Click. <laughs> Libra 8. <laughs> that doesn't actually have a thing on it. It says, oh, fishing on Europa. That's one of the insane oceans under ice, right? Hi, yes. Velask. Hey, Velask. You're back in Saudi Arabia? How's that? It's 42 degrees outside. Um, Celsius? Yeah, I was gonna say you mean Celsius, don't you? Which and I'm trying means to remember, that but that's bad, right? Like, where's Oscar Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's not so bad. I mean, that's what it was. Not here today, but it was last week. Yeah, like I mean, it's terrible. I don't like it, but it's much better than when we have we're having the days that were like 105. But I don't know what time it is there for you either. Ooh, that's a good point. Because if it's like really early or really late, then that's... Right. It could be terrible. It's like a tubeness. It's 2 a.m. there. Oof. <laughs> 4 a.m. Yeah, um, okay, that's pretty suck. All right, that's gross. That reminds me of uh, Arizona. Yeah. When we lived outside of Phoenix, it would be like that. Like... When you go weeks and your stu like the apartment pool never like when it never goes below a hundred degrees even at night for like weeks, and then you try to get the pool to cool off and the pool is like a lukewarm hot tub. Yeah. Don't like. Eighty. What? Dane would die. I just died. I'm not even there. I've been trying to keep it at 75 and ours. He complains. I complain sometimes. Yes. I'm not certain what it is right now, but I have a feeling it's in the upper 80s right now. But it's early evening. It's 8, 8, it's 8 p.m. here. 8 a.m. Uh -huh. <laughs> Weather. It's currently clear at 79 degrees. There you go. See? Not quite 80. Ooh, I might go for a walk later tonight then. Yeah. You're chilly at 72? You and my sister would get along. My sister's like, oh, it's fine. It's Warmer temperatures. She gets cold easy. Of course, when we lived in Arizona, a lot of times, like if we weren't doing a lot, we'd pump it up. We'd bump it up to like seventy or eighty. Yeah. Because we were so. Because it was like one hundred and fifteen outside, one hundred and ten outside. So if you were just sitting there on the couch and you had a fan going, like it wasn't that bad. 
Yeah, Arizona will F up, like, your idea of temperature. Yes. I'm assuming and Saudi Arabia else. does the same thing. Like, once you've walked around outside for a while in, like, 110 plus degree temperatures, like, I don't think your body's ever quite the same. True. <laughs> I don't know, Etiquette. It took me a while to get back. We were in Arizona for like three years and it took a while. Like for a while I was like, oh, it's only 65 outside and I'd be wearing like a long sleeve shirt and a hoodie or something. Get yourself a sweater. I've been looking at designs, um, patterns. Because Oscar Wolf was talking about knitting a sweater, and I was like, well, I'm not going to knit a sweater, but I want a crochet one. So, we'll see how that goes. It's going to involve counting and paying attention to a pattern, so we'll see. That might not last as long as I'd like. <laughs> Uh-oh. That sounds like a threat. Are you okay, Etike? Are you trying to hint that you need help? Well, I, I crochet, so I wasn't planning to make one on a loom. Um, I've seen sweaters that were made on the loom, and they weren't awesome. So, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what this person did. They weren't great. Uh, there was a slightly better one where someone made, instead of doing tubes, they did panels on the loom, and that was slightly better. Not awesome, though. Yay, spaceman. Posture check. You think you... That is a lot hotter than 90 degrees. I was wondering about that. Um, the last, like... Yeah, you're reminding me of Arizona, and those aren't great memories. True facts. It was so hot. <laughs> 4 a.m. and it's 107. I like it. I do not like it. So, will it get to like 120 or 115 later, like at the height of the heat? Or what are you doing to the Twitch that it dislikes you so much? You were having problems yesterday too, right? Or uh, the last time we streamed. <laughs> time to fire your urologist. <laughs> If only the meteorologist could, like, actually decide the temperature instead of just tell you about it. A meteorologist, okay. I thought you said urologist, and I was like, what? Tina's like, what's happening? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me, Velasque. Um... Before we moved to Arizona, I didn't think it could get that hot, like on Earth. <laughs> I thought, and then when we moved there, we moved to Arizona in the winter. Uh, and so when people were like, oh yeah, it's going to get to like 115 pretty regularly and 120 maybe even. And I was like, they're lying to me because it doesn't get that hot on planet Earth. <laughs> I was wrong. It totally does get that hot on planet Earth. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't... Mm. Oh, no. Ugh. Well, and where you're at, did they do the same thing, like, in 
in Phoenix, the temperature is actually worse than the desert around Phoenix because all of the concrete and the blacktop and the way that they built actually increases the heat Urban in the city. Heat island. Yeah. So have have y'all had that problem too? Like where you actually can go out to the desert and cool off a little bit, which is ridiculous. And okay, they say that, but there were days where people were getting, in different parts of the valley, they were getting dip temperatures that were higher than that. And get into your car after it's been in outside all day with that, and it'll be like 130 in there until you get it cooled down. Or worse. Also, don't get into your car like that. That's work. Yeah. Um... <laughs> See, I was always looking for that um, because I'd, I'd read that, but in Phoenix it never cooled off that much. So it would just stay hot and just build. Um, I always kept hoping we'd get a cold night. <laughs> Me too. So how cold will it get, like when it's getting to be 110 um, in the sun, like, during the day, how cold is it out in the desert at night? And I mean, that's the stuff that'll throw your body really out of whack, because bodies don't like that. <laughs> like, we used, I used to just get the shakes, just coming in from outside, like you go to a restaurant or something and it'd be over a hundred outside. Then you go in and it'd be 65 with the AC and you're just like, yeah. your, your body can't figure out what the, is happening. Right. I can't imagine if it was just that cold, like outside everywhere, like that fast. See around 59 or so. Yeah. Like that change will F you up, won't it? Did they have the misters going at Sonic? I mean, probably. In Arizona, they had misters going all over outside. Literally everywhere. Like literally every. Like in Arizona, if you went to the to the zoo during the the summer or even like the spring and fall, uh, they'd have misters going where you were watching the animals outside at the zoo. Misters everywhere. Hey, Aaron. Like, I actually really, the Phoenix Zoo is actually pretty awesome. I recommend it. I don't recommend, there's another zoo that's out in, like, Surprise or something. It's out in the outskirts, and I don't recommend that one. That one made me cry. Like, I've never been so depressed um, from a zoo in my life. Yeah, that one was like, that one was like a Joe Exotic level type zoo. Yeah, it was gross. The poor animals didn't have, like, they were in these metal concrete cages and they weren't very big. And Yeah. But the Phoenix Zoo was amazing. The Phoenix Zoo had a section where you could go up, um, like they would, they would put hay and like food for the giraffes up high and they had this thing you could walk up and be on a platform and then they'd put the food things right around. So you'd want like the giraffes would be up and you'd be like at eye level with the giraffes and able to look like it was really cool. I liked that a lot. Why am I grabbing that? Why are you grabbing that? Alright, well, I can't complain 
at all about the weather now. Um, no, you can, but... But it all sounds silly <laughs> compared to what Alaska's got going on. <laughs> We're like, oh no, we hit 95 today. <laughs> oh no, it's going to be like maybe 72 tonight. <laughs> Really? That's weird. I did my, um, I did my undergraduate at a state school, but I went to ASU for grad school. And while many of the people that I went to, that I was in class with could read other languages, it wasn't required. or else I wouldn't have been there. Cause I've got some hours in Spanish, but I didn't have a minor or anything. I certainly am not fluent. Oh, Stanford dot, yeah, I'm not sure about it. I feel like you should be like, I feel like you might try contacting them because you've got other, like, I'm assuming, and that's, you know, never a great thing, but I'm assuming you've got non-European languages besides English, which is a European language, but point remains. <laughs> Sorry, I realized I wasn't clear there. I assume that, that you've got, you are at least bilingual. Because you might contact them, and they might accept other than a European language, I would think. Right. I would be, like, I don't know, I think it would be worth checking in, because I, I would think that fluency in, like, like Arabic or Chinese or some other non-European language would also work because you do have English. I don't know. I think it'd be worth asking the question. I don't understand why they would be requiring another, like, specifically European language. That seems backward. Like, if they're accepting, yeah, that seems like something they just haven't thought through. Man, I was so bad at French. The spelling just threw me all the time. Like, I know English isn't the best, for, like, when it comes to spelling, English isn't the best. Ah, that's why my spelling is atrocious. But it would be like, here's a word with, like, 10 vowel or 10 different letters, but you're going to say a completely different sound that doesn't, isn't normally represented by any of it. Like my, my brain was just like, what? I was way better at Spanish. I don't know the German word for potato. <laughs> no? Huh. Like I was just going through it like, I don't think I know that one. <laughs> I'm impressed. I should have kept up on my Spanish. I was a lot better at reading than I was speaking Spanish. But then I got lazy and I lost like all of it. Ooh, have we shown this off yet? I don't think we have to finish on that. Because I, I wasn't making it, can't make it public yet. Okay guys, no public, sorry. Jason, <laughs> that a little late. They, 
they saw me make it, most of it. Oh, that's right. Okay. Don't so tell I anyone. I haven't shown it anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, maybe, I don't, starting from English, the French, French pronunciation based on spelling, my brain couldn't handle it. Like, I could do Spanish, but French just broke me repeatedly. <laughs> didn't see shit, don't know shit. <laughs> there you go, Etiquette, thank you. <laughs> well, and y'all saw I'm working on this, but... Woo. Oh, they can't. Bear. I don't know if you can see it with the... Yeah. Shiny bear. Shiny bear! One of the APs on that dragon. There was a tiny little point of red and a tiny little point of blue that printed through. Um, for some reason, the layers were messed up or something. Even though it's a black and white print. So that's a fun AP that I've got now. Oh, that's cute! Yay! Yes, the wingless bear. <laughs> well, as I get older, languages get harder and harder um, because my hearing is going, which is a thing that runs in my family. Uh, and also, it's not just actual hearing but it's my brain making sense of the sounds coming in so that makes it much much harder even just to understand people speaking English so I'm jealous will ask I wish I had like I really do wish I had the ability to just pick up languages quickly or well I've got a couple friends like you that are like, oh, I'll just pick this up because it's interesting and I'm always jealous. Oh my gosh, Etika, I love watching the videos of like Welsh speakers talking about like Welsh words that sound like something else or the way that like Starbucks people spell their names. <laughs> They're ma Welsh sounds like magic to me. Like in my head, like fairy languages and stuff, like that sounds like Welsh to me. Like. Oh my gosh, I can't even. <laughs> I've heard people try to try to explain the tones, like they're they're making it the, like overly obvious, and I still I ha I still can't do it. Velasque with the the Chinese tones, like I'm just like I swear you didn't change them, and like I can't hear like. <laughs> Like, and with the tones being so important, I wonder how people with hearing problems communicate in Chinese. Like, there's gotta be, because, <laughs> like, reading somebody's lips is not gonna help you at all. <laughs> No one has perfect tones. That, okay, so it's it's a mixture of the tones and then sort of the context and and local, like just knowing what people. 
that would be helpful, probably. Man, that's how do you teach that? That's worse than slang. <sighs> yeah, I've Leslie and I've I've noticed similar. Um, and actually, I sometimes in that way of a Spanish now. Um, I did. I spent. I, I did a three-week language school in Mexico, and um, again, far from fluent. But occasionally, like I'll just like I like I'll hear people talking, and I'll I'll know the gist. Like I couldn't translate word for word or translate exactly, but I'll be able to, like I would be able to randomly be like, oh, they're talking about like her sick dad or something, right? You know, and I couldn't tell you how I got there. It just and I've with things like ordering and stuff that seems to work really well when there's context around like there's just enough left in my brain that it's like oh I can figure this part out right oh that's interesting Velasque see I don't like there's entire There's all the stuff to consider. Um, I had a class in grad school with a bunch of people who spoke, who were fluent at least in two languages and sometimes in, in more than that. And a couple of them want to, wanted to translate like poetry or translate books later. And that was one of the things, like there's all these nuances that you've got to do it right. Um, that I just find fascinating. Like, how do you capture? Like in that case, a joke could be, you know, there could be a lot based on like getting something wrong on purpose and what that would say to us. But like, there's all kinds of just nuance that doesn't, <laughs> that when you're trying to translate can just be lost if you're trying to do word, you know, word to word translation. I, I don't know how anyone manages. Honestly, like, poetry is such a, th like, one of my fellow students, um, she was one of my favorite people in the world, but she was trying to translate the works of a semi-famous, like, female Portuguese poet from, like, 300 years ago. And she was just explaining the process of what she would, and I was like, <laughs> Glazzy, and I want to learn um, ASL someday. One of these days, I'm gonna. I need to learn it. Do it. Given that my hearing is slowly going, I need to <laughs> to learn it. Just in, you know, it, it would be very helpful, like at shows or places where there's so much noise and I'm just not catching things. Velasque, I think that's as good as anything. Um, because sometimes things too, like culturally, we, we find different things funny, right? Like there's, I think sometimes we forget how much that humor isn't necessarily just based on, like, we don't all find the exact same things funny. Well, that's it exactly, Glasdian. Like, I can't tell you how many times that I've just given up trying to talk to somebody at a show when there's a bunch of noise around. Um, and specifically, there are certain people's voices that are at just a particular, in a particular range level that I just, if there's other noise going on, I can't hear. Like, they just, I, I can't hear them. 
<laughs> well, the last I remember reading a manga. God, it's been years ago. Um, but it was just old enough that the people translating had really tried to do a very good job, right? Um, it was before like the big 90s where suddenly you just had like a bunch of really shitty translations happening of everything really fast. And there were notes at the bottom of like every single page because the poor translator was like, this literally translates to this, this, and this, which makes no sense in English, but in Japanese. And then they would explain, like, they would try to explain and break down, like, why it was funny. And I felt like I was learning a lot culturally, but by the time you get to the bottom, it's not funny. <laughs> like, there's no way that you can dissect a joke to that extent and have it be. <laughs> so it was like, it would be a great text, right? If you're learning Japanese or if you're trying to learn about a culture, um, the same way that, like, it's nice to have, um, when, when you're reading Shakespeare, it's nice to have all those notes at the bottom, right? But in terms of just reading it for the story and enjoying the story, it doesn't, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Velasca, I can't even imagine. Like, I was lost the first time I tried to read Shakespeare. Like, I can't imagine coming to... <laughs> <laughs> Old English Dickens. <laughs> well, and it's fun when you get to the point where suddenly you're like, okay, I just read half a page of notes to figure out that this was a dick joke. Awesome. <laughs> like, yay, I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of not like it's yeah it's surprising sometimes I think we forget how fast languages change the lesbian I go I, I'd go with you on that um but I think that if you're, if you're studying English as a language, I think it's important to at least read some of it with all the notes to, to really dig into the changes and the construction and, and especially like a really well annotated, any of the plays really well annotated will, can, will go through and also tell you um, how sure they are that it's actually Shakespeare or which folio it came from and what versions and about the choices. Like, I'm a language nerd. I like that stuff. But yeah, then you're not getting the play. You're getting all that other stuff. <laughs> no, well, and that's the thing. That's what I learned because I first picked up, my dad was a, a theater guy. Like, my, my dad's first... Um, his BA, his undergrad was in speech and theater. Um, so he had the plays. And I don't know, I was in sixth or seventh grade, and I was like, oh, well, Shakespeare's supposed to be fancy. I can read this. <laughs> and then I was like, what is happening? I don't understand any of this. I've heard the new Beowulf translation was amazing. I haven't looked it up. Um... I feel like we ask people to read Be Beowulf too early. Certainly, I feel like I was asked to read Beowulf too early um, and too often. 
in class, and I don't like it. Um, I need to, to be an adult and go back and look at it. <laughs> Tolkien translated Beowulf? Huh. I don't know. I need to go look at that. Me too. I didn't know Tolkien did a translation of Beowulf. That would be amazing because Tolkien was a language nerd, obviously. What? When did that happen? Don't be sarcastic and mean. Why not? Because why? Because why not? Vision astronaut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that. That's cute. I like that he caught a star. That's super sweet. That'd be a cute card. Could be. All right. <laughs> What's next, guys? What should Dane write, draw, right? What should Dane draw? <laughs> there you go. See? That'd be a super cute postcard. All right. Europa Sea Monster. <laughs> liked all the many pages of useless poetry in Tolkien. Gems uh -oh. thrown down. Woo! <laughs> oh no. Whoa, where'd it go? Okay. Well, the thing flickered and I was like, what's happening? What? Why would anyone ask you to read Beowulf in Old English? Beowulf in Old English, unless you speak German, I would admit, like, Beowulf in Old English is, like, it's not, it's not English, obviously. That's insane. I don't understand why anyone would ask you to do that. <laughs> like, English teachers, when, when they're making their students read Beowulf in the U.S. at least, in my experience, they love to bring in an old English edition and make you flip through it. I think just because they're like, hey, if you hate going through the translation, imagine how much you'd hate this if I made you read it. Um, but it was one of the first things you read? Who does that? It's not English. Oh, man. Like, I think anything earlier than Chaucer in its original form is, is rude to ask people to read. <laughs> if they're not actually studying Old English, if they're, if they're studying, if they're just studying English, I think anything. Don't you think? Anything earlier than Chaucer? The only, like, Chaucer was my favorite character in Night's Tale. That's all I know about. Oh, you've never read Chaucer? No, I'm not an it's, English major. So I didn't know any of this stuff. I read. We read Chaucer first in senior English in high school. Junior? Is this your honors English? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. We didn't do honors English. I think that you can like look at at it and go, oh, wow, that's that's not English, and then look at the next, and then see that it changed. Um, or you could just explain, like, hey, it was a Germanic language with some of the same rules of current modern English, and then the French invaded, <laughs> and, everybody, and everybody spo spoke old, like, an older, more formal version of French for a lot of years, for several hundred years, like, and brought in a bunch of French vocabulary, and then it became a different language, and we made some different spelling and grammar rules. <laughs> Done. 
I mean, or yeah, that would work too. I took history and the English language twice in college. I dropped the first one because that professor was insane. Um, and we started back with Beowulf and moved forward, but we weren't actually expected to read it all in the Old English. It was much more of a, like, here's a piece, um, and then here's a translated piece. And, like, let's do some comparisons between the two. It wasn't, like, figure out Old English. Because, <laughs> again, that's crazy. <laughs> I do like dirty jokes. Chaucer is chock full of dirty jokes. <laughs> oh, I bet it is. Tolkien is. Tolkien was such a language nerd. Okay, I'm gonna have to go look that up. Me too. So just like, were they trying to, so, so question when they were, when they were doing, when they were handing a bunch of students for whom English was probably not their first language and they were handing them Beowulf, was this a college course? Like, were you allowed to drop it? And were they trying to get you to do that? Cause to me, that's what you do when you want people to quit. <laughs> I like. I have a lot of feelings about Beowulf, which are probably impeding right now, but... Huh. To make the syllables sound right. See, that sounds very Chaucer-esque. Like, knowing that it was poetry and it was meant to be, like, Beowulf wasn't meant to be written down, it was meant to be recited you know, like, and told as a, as a, as a story, like, around the fire, or in front of, you know, it, like, that makes sense. He wants, he wants the experience to be right more than the exact terms. That seems very Tolkien-esque. The new version starts with bros. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was two years into undergrad? Huh. Maybe they did want you to quit. I'm trying to remember what they used to call those classes. Um, Assholes? No, there was a name for them. And I don't remember what we used to call them, but it was basically like the class that they would that everybody knew was the one where they were trying to get like the people that couldn't hack it or whatever to like drop just so they didn't have to deal with you anymore in the major. Yeah. So everyone knew that the class was maybe harder than it should be. I didn't know this had a name. We all just called them Geo's glasses. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. That's highly specific. I'm trying to remember her name. It was Sister Catherine Cata. One of my fellow students ultimately wanted to translate the the poetry. She wanted. She was obsessed with this um, Catholic sister who I think became like a. Um, abbot, abbess, abbess, probably. I'm not a Catholic. Um, I'm probably getting the terms wrong. But she had visions that she believed were divinely inspired, and she wrote a lot of poetry about it. So she ultimately wanted to translate all of her work, which I think was in French or German and old, because it was like a thousand years ago or eight hundred years ago into English. But apparently some of the stuff, some of the poems and stuff were basically like love poems to God. And some of them got kind of steamy. <laughs> I was like, that's a thing. Why aren't we in Atlanta? That's a good question. Probably because, you know, super people. Man, I'd love to be in Atlanta right now. I'd love to be eating at restaurants in Atlanta. I'm really missing some Sweet Georgia's juke joint right now. Oh, Sweet Georgia's. <laughs> yeah, she was showing me some of the stuff and I was like, um... <laughs> That is a lot of lines compared to usual. <laughs> it's fun watching the monster come out of it. Yeah, like so much of this stuff has been lost. Um, like it's amazing to me. I, you watch documentaries or whatnot and they talk about books that like scientists wrote like a thousand years ago or longer and the only reason we even know is because some other person referred to it in a book they wrote that there's a cop a partial copy in that they found in a library that was rated you know that used to like and it's just like having the actual source right there is so rare I was always impressed when people wanted to study that, but it seemed like asking, like taking on a lot more than, than I had the patience for. I know, thank you. Yeah, um, there were, I believe that there were multiple, um, I don't know, kings, leaders, who, who had extensive libraries, weren't there? And even as far as, like, from, from the Middle East, and then even as far over as, like, like Genghis Khan, I think, like not him specifically, but some of the later Mughal empires did like kept large, vast quantities of things. Like it's it's amazing that there was so much stuff that was around because the cultures themselves didn't value it, but other people and other cultures were like, "Hey, we're gonna keep this a copy of this. This might be important." <laughs> yeah, it's you. You did it. You did all of it. <laughs> Well, thanks. We appreciate it. Also, how old are you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, we've been getting to the. We we've just started the moguls in the pod, the history Mongols. of China pod. Mongols. Mongols. Moguls. Moguls was India. Right. Sorry. Thank you. Dane's correcting my pronunciation, which is good. Um, we've we've just gotten into the Mongols, um, and started really getting diving in in the history of China podcast, and they wrecked a lot of people's shit. kind of their thing. It was kind of their thing. Like, you kind of get the sense that one day, like, Genghis just woke up, was like, Genghis just woke up, was like, I think I want to go burn a bunch of shit down. Like, everywhere. There are too many people with unbroken shit <laughs> right? on this planet. I need to fix it. And then once he'd burned everything he could find, he was like, he sent out people and was like, find some more shit that we can then go burn. <laughs> Gee, Vinny. Fair enough. <laughs> Same Medicaid. Well, and it's amazing to me how many scholars in Europe rediscovered things that hadn't really been forgotten anywhere else. <laughs> um, that's when we did our, our art book on scientists, there was a lot of that, like you'd, you'd hear like, Oh, so and so discovered whatever math thing or scientific thing, and some of them absolutely did. But some of them, like when you really read into it, maybe they less discovered it and more just found some remnants in a book that someone else had done. Yeah, like, like for instance, the concept of zero. Algebra. <laughs> Exactly. Hydrate. Pink. It was, when I realized how many of the words we're still using were just straight up made up by Shakespeare, that was a, that was a crazy time. 
Like, I know he was successful for a lot of stuff, but I feel like if you could be that successful for that many long-term changes to a language, that's, as a writer, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Glazian, by the way, says that this critter is the right amount of Cretaceous. Yay. She likes it. That is a fun phrase. The right amount of Cretaceous? Yeah. It may, and Velasco, it makes me sad just how many cultures, like human cultures over time, have had enormous stores of information and knowledge and creativity and have just decided that no one else needed it. Like, it's not even, like, it's not interesting to me, but just, like, I'm going to destroy this so no one else has it ever again either. Um, that seems to be a human thing, and it, it just, it's, it's a, not a thing I understand. Because there's something about a library that just gets me. <laughs> And even if I don't need the whole library, I just, you know, someone else might need that part. I don't, I don't know. Um, Glasdian, I think you did the looking glass make a bunch of words that we kept too? I feel like that's true. Yeah. I feel like, like Lewis, Lewis Carroll Carol. was Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> against Dr. Strange and his banner snatch. <laughs> Carol was quite the word wizard. It was Lewis Carol, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ooh, Victorian detective fiction? That's a great mix. And the Victorians were so much fun. They were so uptight about so much and had so many rules about so much, but then you look at their fiction and they just went there so much more than so many other people before had. Well, they had to. They had to do it in fiction. They couldn't do it in real life. Fair. Well, and personally, I feel like we're always just that one step away from, um, oh, look at my brain, not nearly enough coffee, and it's been quite the day. Uh, uh, help me, the costumes and stuff, the stuff that's big now. Steampunk. Yes. So, like, anytime you're digging into the Victorian stuff, like, you're just that one step, at any moment, steampunk. <laughs> well, they were finally figuring out what the printing press was for. They spent a lot of time printing the Bible, so next, as it always does, smut. Right. <laughs> I have heard of the Disney small, the smut ball. The what? The Disney smut ball. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with, with the last, the what? <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so I've got some friends who work for Disney. I'm going to ask them about the smut bolt and see if they've ever seen it. Or if they have anything in the smut bolt. I hope not. I hope they would just burn anything like that. Given how virulently anti-Nazi and anti-communist Walt was. In any case, this image makes me think of the song Serpent on Jupiter. <laughs> Fair. So how's everybody's family doing? And yes, um, yes, there are actually um, official Disney cartoons with Donald wearing a, a swastika. Because he was the the villain in that cartoon. Sort of. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Walt was super. Like Walt was actually a veteran. It. Um, he served in World War One. Yeah. And he was he was very patriotic and very anti the Nazis. And yeah, Disney made official like they worked for the US military and the US government during World War Two. Almost caused them to go out of business actually, because they didn't make enough money to do like doing it. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Lazian and Edit Care answering my question by asking each other. <laughs> so it wasn't so much that Donald was the Hitler as he was uh, working at a munitions factory. I don't remember the cartoon that well. But they're, it's an actual Disney it, cartoon. It was their way of warning about how fascism, how sneaky the fascists are, and how, how careful you had to be to, to not let the fascists in, basically, I think, if I remember correctly. I've seen the cartoon, it's just been a long time. Yeah, same. Like, it, it was in no way pro Nazi. It's on YouTube.
Uh oh. Streamlabs is having trouble again. Scroll down for a minute. <laughs> I miss some stuff. Because Streamlabs is like, listen to me! Okay, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Trump is a fucking joke. It's true. Uh, really bad one. I have a really hard time with Ben and Nan. The more tired I am, the more I eff it up. Save. I can't save. Go to Magma Saves. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad that Streamlabs is like not super excited about. Nazis. There's a difference between talking about them and being pro them, though. Streamlabs, of course, is not that picky. Right. I've been told that English maker English, yeah, that, that, excuse me English majors make the best lawyers. Um, and okay, there's just a few things like in my writing um, when I'm editing my own work, I have to go back and really like, for instance, pay attention to the tense, um, especially in fiction, but just in general for for reasons, my brain likes to switch tenses a lot in ways that aren't helpful to the, the work. Um, so it's just, there's particular issues that I have to be aware of in my own writing when I'm going back and fixing. And then and then are definitely one of them. Yeah. Probably because they were basically used interchangeably where I grew up. I bet their contracts were gorgeous. I really love a well-written contract. Especially one that's like succinct, but just perfect. Somewhere around here, I've got a couple, like, I've got a file of contracts that we've gotten from shows. Because a lot of, most of the time, um, any, a show that's decent will make you sign a contract. And there will be a whole lot of other stuff. It's more than just a, like, you agree to pay this much. And there are some really nice ones <laughs> that I've kept because I'm that kind of nerd. Like, you got to keep them all until you've done the show, but. Well, the problem with the whole co the problem with the entire argument about Oxford commas is that there's a point to them, and there's a there's 
a time when you take them out and a time when you don't, and they change the meaning, and people aren't really getting that. Like, it's not a, oh, I just don't like an extra comma, so I'm going to take it out. Like, you have to actually want it to mean what you've now changed the meaning to. And it irritates the shit out of me, as an editor, when people just go, oh, well, I just don't like the extra comma. I don't like the way it looks. And I'm like, that's not the point. It's not there for looks. Enjoy my rants on the English language. Or don't. You're going to get them anyway. <laughs> Jim says that the next drawing is a PSL getting punted into the sun. Oh, you're not one of the people that doesn't like people to be happy, are you, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Spicy sunrise. A friend sent you a meme the other day that says tacos are more important than pumpkin spice. Fight me. What? Why? Why do we gotta fight about it? Like, I'll take the tacos, you have your PSL, and then we're both fine. Like, I don't understand why people think want to make it. Want to fight about a flavor of drink. Exactly, Galazdian. Thank you. Not Ex Thank you. Exactly also, Barb, for two different subject matters. Well, unfortunately, I think that a lot of people got the idea that commas were just there to like give you a reason to stop and breathe. <laughs> And while that can totally be the case if you're if you're writing a screenplay, that's if you're writing a thing like that's not the only thing it's there for. Shenanigans. Yep. Exactly, Etta K. The commas change the mean. The punctuation changes the meaning. Have you seen the the one um, about Stalin, Hitler, and the hookers? that explains the Oxford comma and why it's necessary sometimes and not at other times. Dane printed it out for me. I used to have, I had it on my wall for the longest time. It's a little cartoon. <laughs> why are you trying to fight, start PSL fights guys? Stop. <laughs> It's pumpkin spice latte. People abbreviate it to PSL. It's it's a Starbucks flavor for a coffee drink. It's out now, so so are all the people that are angry about it for reasons. Fight you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Shh. 
<laughs> and the king is just like, fight me! <laughs> 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 it's, a, it's just a freaking flavor. Um, when people like, if it makes people happy, whatever. I, I, mean, actually, I actually like the flavor of pumpkin, and I don't think that PSLs actually taste like pumpkin. So. Because they're not. They're there's not no. Supposed to. Even though they're pumpkin spice lattes. They're supposed to taste like the spice that's in the pumpkin I know. pie. But I feel like back in the day, the original ones. See, I'm going to be that hipster. I feel like back in the day, they did taste a little bit like pumpkin pie. Like there was some like fake pumpkin that kind of flavor that tasted a little bit like pumpkin pie, and I like that better. But. Either way, like, <laughs> I feel like the world's on fire. Let people have pumpkin spice. Right, and let them have it in August if they want. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's September now, so the spice must flow. I don't like pumpkin spice, but I just want my coffee. I want expensive coffee, brewed properly, and black. Like, delicious. Even if the world isn't on fire, still let people enjoy things. Amen, Galazdian. Amen. Word. <laughs> Jim, it's mean to say that I can't have pumpkin until we've reached a random number on a thermometer. Why? Pumpkin is delicious. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to get until... Because people are nuts. I would have pumpkin pie right now if we could. Because pumpkin pie is delicious and I like it. <laughs> it, it is September. Welcome to September. Yeah, we just basically were like, screw August. August sucks. To hell with August. Yeah. Um, Threw in the trash. Like, we actually got a lot of behind the scenes stuff done in August, but August wasn't our best forward facing month that we've had this year. And I'm just going to deal with that. It's going to be just fine. Say it's <laughs> Sometimes we just go with where, with how it ended up. Like, Why? Everybody wants to be mean to me. Parts like I hate coffee. Jim's like you can't have pumpkin until it's fifty or lower outside. <laughs> no, you just don't want me to have the things I like. <laughs> Ooh, pumpkin tempura sounds amazing. It does sound amazing. I've never had it. That sounds really good. I've had. We've had pumpkin tempura. Have we? Yeah. When? Usually when we get. Tempura at a restaurant. There's a. It's not like our pumpkins. It's, it's like, like squash. Japanese pumpkins or squash. Yeah. It's it's squash. But they call it's, it pumpkin. Yeah, but it's not pumpkin. It's squash. They call it pumpkin. But it's not pumpkin. They call it. Pumpkin. Also, why didn't we grow pumpkins? Because pumpkin bread I is delicious. I asked you to grow pumpkins, and you told me no. Don't pick up any seeds. You should have. Because <laughs> now I want pumpkins. It is existential dread Wednesday, and people don't want me to have coffee. What? Existential dread. Squanch. Yeah, Squanch. as Dean calls him. He's very sad, by the way. All the squanch. Um, did you check your squanches today? Not today. I checked uh -oh. them yesterday. There weren't any. There weren't even any um, fruits on. All the all the squanch things are getting slow. They're slowing down. We were getting a good supply for a while, but it's still a lot of shit outside. They need to keep giving us squanches. Um, yellow zucchini. Because yellow zucchini tastes completely different than green. And I don't know why, but I like yellow better. Uh, Jim's got all these rules about when I'm allowed to enjoy flavors.
Ooh, a food cart that had pumpkin tempura sushi. Ooh, that sounds delicious. I'm mostly with you, Balask. I've had a few cups of coffee that were delicious. Um, Only a few? Like, I've had a lot of delicious coffee, but like, that were like high priced, but I think worth it. Like, I just really enjoyed. Um, like, but a lot of those are, were specific kinds of coffee. And I could have enjoyed them at home too. Like they were expensive because that coffee is expensive. Like there's a bunch of quote unquote Kona coffee or Hawaiian coffee out there, but most of it are just mixes with only a little bit of actual Kona coffee. Um, if you can get it straight, like for real, all of the beans are actually Kona coffee from Hawaii. They're going to be expensive, but it's so good. <laughs> We're fighting about whether words mean things. <laughs> That's my chat. <laughs> yeah, all of our squash ball, like our vines are just, and they were going insane, and now they're just rotten. You're being told that the yellow is a bold choice. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, nine packs of world coffee. Yum. I really like, um, there's some Ethiopian coffee I really like that's got a really fruity flavor. Um, and again, I love like actual high quality Kona coffee. You've just got to be really careful. Um, people talk about like how bad regulations are, but I think that the world would be a better place, or at least the U.S. would and my coffee would if we had some freaking rules about and regulations about what they were, how they were allowed to label coffee, because you shouldn't be allowed to label it Kona coffee. If it's 10% Kona, <laughs> like there should be a rule, damn it. Um, Miss Aaron likes the yellow. Thank you. <laughs> We've got something going on about a boyfriend, but I don't think that's for us. Um, <laughs> I try to update Dane on the on the chat. Ooh, see that's fancy. You'll have to tell us about that one. One of the world coffees is Guatemala elephant coffee, and it's the one that's gone through the the elephant poop. There are no elephants in Guatemala. I thought it was... Is it goat coffee? Because I've heard of the goat coffee. It's only coffee if it's made in the Kona region, region of France. Otherwise, it's sparkling bean juice. Well... <laughs> I know! Like, regulation... Well, it would just be good because, like, I know it's expensive, but if I'm going to spend that money, I would like to know for sure what I'm getting. Because I've had really good Kona coffee that is a high percentage of Kona that tastes delicious. Um, but then I've had a lot of Kona coffee that's not that. And I want to only pay for the, the stuff that's the high quality, right? Your mom is living vicariously through you. I mean, as long as it's a, it's a good life, like, there you go, right? <laughs> It says Guatemalan elephant on the box, so there hmm. you go. Maybe, I mean, maybe they it just doesn't mean that they exported like, some Guatemalan coffee to somewhere with an elephant. Or maybe they brought elephants to Guatemala maybe. and fed them the coffee. I meant to, that would make it really expensive. Either way, I don't know. Interesting. We have elephants here. Zoos are a thing. Are they? You don't want two boyfriends, none is enough. <laughs> Fair. I 
I've been done dishes or laundry for you. <laughs> Pros and cons. So I haven't had elephant coffee. Um, we had, was it monkey or goat coffee? That was the through the system. I don't remember which one it was. A fan brought it to us. And the first day it was really, really good. But the second time. I think it was goat coffee. Was it goat? Yeah. The second time it was really, really bad. But I think it was the maker, not the coffee. So, for what it's worth. I mean, the process of roasting the beans probably makes it safe, right? I assume. All right, I need more coffee. Speak Yay, up. coffee. Coffee. Whoa, that's it. Crochet hook's trying to run away. Can be used for that right now. Yeah, some coffee's not good when it's cold. Being bad at being a tea snob. Coffee doesn't like your body. Blasi and my mom says the same thing. She says she's allergic to coffee. Which the idea of is is terrifying to me. One of your boxes has an actual tiger. What? Like they put a tiger in the box? What's where's that, that one seems from? Like a bad idea. I'm, okay, I'm gonna not actually get my coffee out of here. It's true. I'll be right back. Has it eaten your face yet? Because then it might be an actual tiger. Oh, that's neat. Artificial civet coffee. All right, Lilo and Stitch surfing on Europa with a monster underneath. Because why not, really? It's how we roll here on Suggestive Sketch Wednesdays. Cheap, uh... Cheap jasmine tea is actually pretty good. Cheap jasmine tea, is that what you said? Yep. Good thing we're talking to you, though. Rude. Thank you. Oh, Dane loves Sumatra coffee. I do love Sumatra coffee. Sumatra coffee is, his, is like his favorite. If we're at a new place and he's not sure, that's what he'll go with, almost always. Yep, yep. Thank you. Do we have time for one more? Well, you've been told PSL into the sun. PSL in the sun? Into the sun, being launched into the sun. Okay. You could do it like a rocket. No, I've got an idea for that one. Probably my idea. I know. I thought, oh no, I had it on the... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was using just a straight old coffee maker. Yeah, we got um, a, a drip machine. Uh, the drip machine, so I had it on the thing. Day in, day out, I just... Wait for this sort of Night thing. Night, Lesbian. Night! Um... We use our drip machine. For the more expensive stuff, I like to, I've got my uh, French press. But I'd still be out there.
No, no, to a cut rotting in a locked car being baked by the rays of the Arizona summer sun. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Although, now we do, um, we, we do sometimes do iced coffee, and that's when you just throw the, the grounds in the water and stir them and let them sit on the counter for a day. We tried the Keurig, but um, I wasn't going to pay for the cups. It's a lot of waste. Um, and remember, hippie from Portland. Um, and the, the little thing that you could get to put your own grounds in wouldn't make the coffee strong enough. Of course, this was several years ago, so don't. I don't, like, I don't even know what they have now. So I took the whole thing back. It's true. Um, my sister has a Keurig. Or what I, like, does, I think it's a Keurig. It's Keurig. Um, so when we go visit her, because she doesn't drink coffee, so when we go visit her, that's what she uses. She just buys the things when we're there. Um, yeah, we have a drip machine, and we have a couple French, French press. Presses. Couple? Do we have a couple? Because you got the one that we've had for years, and then you have the one that it's like the individual. Oh, yeah, thing. I do have the individual one. Great. How common is it for someone to move from one state to, to fully move to another state? I mean, pretty common. We um, it, like, uh, we've done it four times. We've done it. Well, so I grew up in Missouri. Missouri Arizona. Um, and Dane and I got Oregon. married in Missouri. Yeah. And then we moved to Arizona. And then we moved to Oregon. Um, and now we live in Kansas. So we've done it. Three times. Yeah. Um, we did it a bunch when I was a kid. D yeah, Dane growing up did it a lot. Um, so, so it's not unknown. There are a lot of people, like I would say... I would say a lot of people don't do it. There's a lot of people that just don't even leave. Like they don't go far from home. Um, I'd be interested to look. I bet more than half of Americans don't really ever move that far from home or, the out, or outside of the state. They, but then the rest of us are all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Washington's not the worst state at a king. Although you're in a tiny place, I think, is what you said. I think you're in, like, you said you were in a tiny town, which can definitely make it less fun. Is it odd? Yeah, like those of us that are going to move are going to move. I mean, and of course, part of it too is some of our states aren't very big and some are really big. So like you can live, you can move a hundred miles away. And like if you were in Texas, you'd still, you could still be in Texas really easily. Um, but like the state of Connecticut is really small or Delaware are super small. Um, so I don't know if you could move. 100 miles and still even be in the state from any part of it. Yikes, Etike. Yeah, that wouldn't be my choice. <laughs> um, like, and my sister, my sister grew up in Missouri with me, but then when she went to grad school, she went to a grad, grad school at American University in D.C. And she lived in Maryland, um, and now she lives in Virginia, but it's all kind of the same big metro area. So she's lived in two different states there, but again, same metro area. So it just sort of depends, I guess. I think those of us that are willing to move will move more often because it's just a thing we're interested in or we're willing to do. Um, the other thing is a lot of people will go to college or grad school somewhere further away and then it's not unusual for them to live, to continue living in the area that they went to grad school. Um, like a good friend of mine from high school 
uh, graduated from the same high school I did in Missouri, but he went to college in Kansas, not very far from us at like a couple, you know, like three hours maybe. Uh, but he went, but after that he got a job in Texas and he's moved multiple places in Texas, but like that was where he first got his first job and he's just kind of stayed in Texas. Like it really worked for him. Weird. See, I think, like, it can go back and forth. I mean, there are people I grew up with that really haven't moved far from where I grew up, and they stay really close to their family, and they see their family constantly, and they live in that, like, I don't know. I haven't... I haven't lived, like, I, my dad lives, like, two and a half hours away now, and that's the closest I've lived to family in, in more than a decade. Um, it's just not, oh my gosh. <laughs> See, the last, that, some of that is cultural. Um, I have friends who, who still live with their parents, and it's very, it's still very much, sounds more like what you're describing. Um, me, I moved out right after high school. Um, I went to college and I lived at school and I stayed with my mom for a month or two the first year, second year maybe, um, of college. But then after that, I just completely lived like in an apartment. I had my own place. Um, and we lived in the same town, but yeah, I just, or in the same area, but I don't know. I just... It's better that way. It was easier, I think. Like, it just kind of depends, I think, on... Yeah, Jim, you don't live that far from your parents, right? Ask in college, I had friends that did that. Uh, they went home every weekend, um, but that just wasn't. I don't know. It wasn't what I did. Also, sometimes the moving depends on the jobs that people are choosing. There's certain careers that you definitely need to move if you're going to work in that in that career. Etiquette, that changes, that's a thing too, like just in different parts of the U.S. Um, like when I, when we lived in Oregon, we didn't drive, I mean, you know how it is in Portland, like depending on which side of the river you live on, like you plan a day trip if you're going to cross the river, right? Like you just don't go that far. Um, but here in Kansas, I've got friends that'll drive two or three hours just to go hang out with other people for the afternoon, which is insane to me.
part of it, like, Lusk, I grew up in um, a city, in a town called St. Joseph in Missouri, and it wasn't very big. I don't know how big it is now, but it was always like 60, 70,000 people maybe. Um, and I didn't want to live in that town, but I certainly, I didn't want to live in, in a place that size. Um, and, and Dane kind of agreed with me. And so, you know, we, after college, we got married and we, we tried some other things and the Phoenix metro area is the, like the fifth or sixth largest metro area in the country, um, which is where we went first. And that was a little too big and it was also way too spread out. Um, but even now, like Wichita is the largest city in Kansas. Like we like a much larger area. So I think that's part of it too, is not everybody's meant to live in the size of town or the place that they grew up in. But yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot more people moving now than we would have, like Barb said, than we would have 40 or 50 years ago. London, the city of undiagnosed chronic depression. I don't know that I need that. <laughs> Like, my sister lives literally halfway across the country. She used to live across the entire country. Like, it used to be, I was on the east, or on the west coast, and she was on the east coast. Um, which is hard, but we still tried to make sure we saw each other at least once or twice a year. Um, but, like, this will be the first, God, this will be the first year we haven't seen each other in forever. One or both of us flying one way or the other. Yep. Um, but I liked London when I, when I visited, I was a high schooler, so, you know, who only knows what it would be like now, but I like big cities. I loved New York. I still love New York. Mm -hmm. Um, same. Like, it's, it's one of my favorite places to visit. Oh, see, that's what New York is like. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's like my favorite thing. Um, you know, growing up in a town that wasn't very big and it wanted to be smaller than it was and was super just boring. Um, I love being in places where you see different kinds of people and they're speaking different languages and there's different kinds of food. I mean, <laughs> like that's, it's so much fun. It's, it's the best part. Like the best part of our jobs in a normal year <laughs> is that we get to visit 
other places and we get to go to other cities and we get to see diff like different things and eat different food and be around different kinds of people and it's it's my favorite thing Oh my gosh, Etike, we've got we've got a place here that makes their chicken strips and they're so good. We haven't been there in a while. We need to go there. We like to get the box of the large ones. They're really big, um, but we get like 10 of them because we know we're not going to eat 10 of them. They're that big that two of us can't eat 10 of them. Um, and then we have leftovers and they make really, really good sandwiches. So good for your leftovers. There you go, the sun destroying a pumpkin spice latte. We still miss the the food from the Mexican place down the way. Yeah. From our condo in Oregon. Yeah. Every time we go back we have to take a lift all the way out to almost Beaverton to go, but it's the so lid. good. It's the lid off the cup. See it? Yeah, living next to a card pod would have been dangerous. They had just put one in in our neighborhood, just up the street from us. Um, but it hadn't gotten very big by the time we left. Like there was a burger joint that it was like the Joe's Burgers place, which was an expensive rip off of In-N-Out, so we didn't go there very often. Had a waffle cart, which wasn't bad, but well, and they weren't open very often because they were mostly there for the stu for the there was a school nearby and they were mostly there during school hours. Yeah. They weren't open very late. That's rude. You shouldn't eat brisket in front of people unless you're sharing. It's true. I feel like that's actually a crime here in the Midwest. There's definitely one in Texas. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough to to uh, assuage the crime. I think it isn't, unless it's a bad <laughs> She's a brisket. terrible child. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, I guess. I love how you're putting pumpkins in it so people know what it is. I just noticed that. Sad. It was more 90s than the snap bracelets from the 90s. <laughs>
Should we? Pogs. People have done that. Have they? Yeah. Have they? Yes. I'm not making pogs. Pogs. I'm not. Nope. Not doing it. Snap bracelets, maybe. Rocket I'll be pogs. sad about it, but I'm not doing pogs. Pogs. No. Rocket pogs. No. Pogs were terrible at the time. I'm not making them now. What's wrong with pogs? Did you have them? No. Right. I was wanting some. Did you know how to use them? Yeah. You were one of the few. You stacked them up and then you had a slammer and you slammed them down. However many popped off the thing, you had to keep them. I know that. You were one of the few. Most people just collected them and it turned out they were just a pile of stuff to have. And why? Gotta have a game. <sighs> I wonder if you could make like die cut snap bracelets. You'd probably cut people, given how they're made. They're metal like with a covering. Water on plastic. Maybe. I remember the old one. Etta K, if you can come up with some great product ideas and then like price them out for me. Yeah. That's the hard part. It's finding somebody to produce the damn things. Figuring out who's going to make them and what it's going to cost and getting your your numbers under a thousand. Like there are so many things we could do if we wanted to buy a thousand of them. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out I do not want to buy a thousand of almost anything. Chicken approved. <laughs> Chicken testing. <laughs> I wonder. And it can remind me someday um, to make Dane fine. There was a point where Dane had a whole bunch of chicken puns that he'd sketched. And you, I think, would be one of the few people that would appreciate it to the extent that we appreciated it while Dane was drawing them. We had so much fun with those. It was a really bad show, and that was the, the bright spot of that show. Um, yeah. Yeah, the U.S. has Five Guys. Five Guys started in the U.S. Yep, in Washington, D.C. Where was Maryland? D.C. area. It was the D.C. metro area, I believe. I like Five Guys, except that the one in Portland, <laughs> for whatever reason, if you ask for mustard on your sandwich, you got a mustard sandwich. I don't, either their mustard thing was effed up. And I like mustard on my hamburger, and I don't like it being a mustard sandwich. Mustard sandwich. So, if you ever go to Portland, Five Guys, just beware. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like them, but, like, I went with my dad. Oh, God. When, when he and I came out to, to Wichita to look around during a visit before we'd moved here, and he'd never eaten it one. And he was like, the sandwich is good, but the fry it freaked him out to eat them out of the bag like that. Like, he just felt like he was eating trash, and it really bothered him. It was really weird how it just, he couldn't do it. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, me too. That top corner winner was just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that bottom one lived outside of our apartment or our condo in Portland. <laughs> yep, and it was dancing underneath our window. Yeah. Most most middays, yeah. <laughs> yep. I bet they did, yeah, they're pretty great. Wonder if Robin's seen those. Robin needs to see this. All right, if you like crows and such, um, and actually just in general, etiquette. If you haven't seen, what's her what's her website? The Is Gorgonist. It? Okay, that's right. It's thegorgonist.com. Check out Robin's stuff. She's a Portland person, um, so she's local to you. But her stuff's amazing, and yes. she's obsessed with crows. Like crows are her thing. Those are true statements. So, 
Oh gosh. Depends on the day. Why does everybody want to start fights? Well, that's, that's going to start a fight on our chat, I promise you. <laughs> People have really strong feelings about their, their fast food. <laughs> <laughs> See? Jim agrees with me. Like, even if you try to get it down and you're like, well, what's the best, like, taco fast food? Or what's the best, like, start a war for you? <laughs> I mean, oh, Lord. Um, it will. That's what America does, really. Right. We start wars for people. Um, but, yeah, like, even even burgers and stuff, like, people have really strong feelings about. Um Needs more research. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, taco trucks. Have... I don't mm. love Popeyes. Dane likes Popeyes. I'm kind of. Hey, Oscar Wolf, what Popeyes. did you get here? Hey, Oscar Wolf! We were talking about temperatures earlier, and the last was giving us temperatures in Celsius that probably would have upset you because they were hot. Um... <laughs> Tim Hortons entered the chat. Oh, Tim Hortons. I actually really, like, I have a soft spot in my heart for Tim Hortons. Um, ooh, like, okay, well, ask, here's the thing. A&W is the best. A&W. But it's in Canada. In Canada. A&W originally started as an American chain. A&W in the United States is fine. It's, it's, it's not great. It's, it's not fine. fine. It's not... It's not a thing you would go out of your way for. But if it's there and you're hungry, it probably won't kill you. It's not Hardee's. Um, in Canada, it's great. <laughs> it's completely different. Like, literally, you, yeah. You, you, so yeah, Except you kept it for yourselves. Right. You didn't fix it for us. You didn't send it back to us. <laughs> you fixed it for yourselves. And their breakfast is entirely decent and super cheap. So, like, but, like, if you get A&W here, it's not, like, you're in no way preparing yourself for what it is. That they're, they're just, they're completely different companies and everything now. True. Border is closed. Right. I like In-N-Out. Yeah, um, I, I really enjoy In-N-Out's burgers and fries and shit. Like, I like In-N-Out a lot. It's a California chain that you're slowly seeing move elsewhere. Um burgers i like it a lot i like that they've got they they've gone back to that really simple burger chain like we do burgers and we do shakes and we do fries like that's what we do um i like that supposedly they pay their people better than other fast food places in a given area um do i think it's the best burger i mean i personally prefer five guys to in and out um, but I prefer in and out to five guys. Yeah. I like so both. you get like, but they're very similar burgers. Like you get, um, but you'll get, you'll get arguments cause people will, will, if they want to go burgers, they'll want to go like Wendy's or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everybody, Oscar Wolf, I don't know how long you've been here, but people keep trying to start fights today. It's true. It's not Existential Dread Wednesday. It's Let's Start a Fight Wednesday. It's like... <laughs> Twitch battle. <laughs> How's McDonald's in the... Okay, here's the thing, Velasque. I can't promise you that McDonald's tastes the same in Saudi Arabia as it does in the U.S. Because for, like... McDonald's changes their recipes and their suppliers based on the culture, like based on what they can get in a given area, but also the culture. So like um, when McDonald's moved to India, for example, they made sure that their fries were all potato and were um, cooked only in vegetable oil, right? Because India has a lot of vegetarians and they a lot of people that definitely definitely don't eat cow um it wasn't until later that we found out that we all found out that they had been treating <laughs> their french fries with chemicals that included cow parts some stuff from cows beef in the tallow. u.s beef tallow to make them taste a particular way in the united states so vegans and vegetarians that have been eating mcdonald's fries in the united states were oops, kind of eating cow. Um, 
They don't do that anymore, but they used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I traveled in... I worked at McDonald's as a, as a kid in high school. Um, when I when I traveled to Europe, I found out that like the apple pies, the fried pies in Europe at McDonald's, were completely different than the pies in the United in, in the United States. They they made them differently. They tasted different. They were so much better. Um, and by the way, the Big Mac tasted way way better in in Switzerland than it did back home. They weren't the same at all. Like, it, they said they were the same. They looked the same. They didn't taste the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, it's... So, it's hard to know, like, if a company is serving you actually the same food that they're serving in, in a different place. True. Um... Because, like, McDonald's tasted so much better in Europe than it did in the United States. <laughs> I used to work at Sonic, actually, way back in the day. I used to like the chili dogs there. Still do, actually. Night, Aaron. Night, Aaron. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's super nice. It's a royale of cheese. It's a quarter pounder. In France. Pump your uh, Pulp Fiction yolk. No. Um, yeah. And then, like, when I went to Mexico, they had, they had fries. They had the normal McDonald's fries. But then they had Papas Fritas, which is just French fry, basically, in, like, Spanish. But, um, they had, but... They were like these wedge fries that I had never seen before, but I saw them all over Mexico in the early 2000s at McDonald's. And they were so good. They had like a weird breading thing on them. They were the amazing. Never seen them since. <laughs> Sounds kind of like JoJo's. Yeah, they were, oh, they were great. So, there is, in the United States, there have been a couple variations of a spicy chicken sandwich or a spicy McChicken sandwich. Um, the one they had when I was in high school and college was so good. The spicy McChicken that was so good. If you could get it fresh. Oh, it was great. Um, it depends. I don't, but I could put out some feelers. We could ask. Um, and then in the U.S., they have what they call a big in, in tasty, big and tasty. They still have that. But I don't know if they still have it. I haven't looked at a McDonald's menu in a while. So, like that was kind of a new thing after, like towards the end of my college years, they brought here. That was basically their Whopper. But, like, even even McDonald's in the United States, the menu changes based on where you go a little bit. Um, like, here, a big thing is the McRib sandwich. Most places, it's a seasonal thing that they only bring out for, like, a month or two a year. Um, and then it'll be a big deal in that area. Don't eat it. It's terrible. Um, but for some reason, people like it a lot. Um but there are some McDonald's in some parts of the country where you can get it all the time. Hmm. Oh, the McDLT. It was like a McBLT, except it was, yeah. Well, there's like the McDLT, which is the one that, uh... Yeah, see, Barb, I thought it was then, too. Um, but a couple of years when I worked there in college, high school, they brought it out for like a month in the summer, which I have no idea. And then, um, I went to a McDonald's in St. Louis, in Missouri, where they had it all the time. Like, it was just a menu item. And I'd never seen that before. So... What is it? Oh, God. I don't actually know what it is. 
Um, no like, one knows. They claim they know. It's like pulped up pork and it, beef and weirdness. It's basically like hot dogs. In that it's, but it's, it's formed into the shape of a pad rib. Yeah, yeah it's it, made it of pork. It says it's pork. It says it's, it's, pork. It's, it's, it probably is made of pork, but Porkish. it's a formed patty to kind of look like a rib. It's porkish. Um, they've, they've formed it like a chicken nugget. Um, and then they... Molded. Delicious. Mold. They cook them and then they cover them in a sauce. And the sauce is actually pretty good. If you can just get the sauce that hasn't had the ribs cooking in it. But, um, it's really gross. Uh, they take these frozen patty things and they just leave them in the freaking sauce and these things and they just cook for, oh, they're so gross. <laughs> but people really like them and I think it's not, thank you. That, yeah, yeah. What Etiquette said. Yes. It's that and it's pig. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Pigish. Oscar. Oh, I've seen the commercial for the McDLT. It's got uh, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld in it. It's great. Oscar Wolf, I think it's more than gross adjacent. Um, I'm not worried about the compressed, mechanically separated meat product part of it. Uh, it's the <laughs> it way is. they cook it and the way that people just leave them in there. You cook um, it by, by just soaking it in hot barbecue sauce-like flavoring. Uh... Yeah. Having worked at a McDonald's, that was probably one of the grosser things that I saw people eat. Like, that is one of the things that I wasn't a big fan. Like, I wasn't, I didn't like them beforehand, but now I definitely would not eat them. Yeah, I think, um, I think Velasque broke the Streamlabs thing. <laughs> so, it just gave up tonight. Right. <laughs> Those were tonight's sketches. Jim, that was, God, that was probably 10 years ago when I saw it in St. Louis. Um, and I've heard people say that they've had, like, that the McDonald's they grew up in had them all the time or that they've seen them in places. So um, I definitely know that McDonald's definitely has districts and you can get different things at different times based on what your location. Fun fact, Wichita is supposedly so average that we are... <laughs> The test case for most fast food, which is why we have the only Chipotle drive through right now. We're the test case for a lot of fast food restaurants that are here. Well, like, I, we're not yes. the I wish we were the test case for In N Out. Yeah, that'd be nice. Because then we'd have an In N Out. Yeah. The hard ones with the hard ones. <laughs> the last got. Three four, of them? four? Names, plus the one where uh, Streamlabs is like, watch it. That's what tell happens. everybody about it. <laughs> That's what happens when we talk about Nazis, apparently. Um, we weren't pro Nazi, but the Streamlabs isn't that picky. I mean, Shake Shack's fun. I went there in Chicago. Shake Shack is overrated. I'm going to throw it out there. It was fine. Fighting words. Some people will call that fighting words. I, I had a. My, my first college roommate from St. Lu was from the St. Louis area. Um, she was obsessed with Shake Shack, and she would fight people. Um, I don't know. Eh. Sonic does make great shakes. That was one thing I really liked doing. We used to do them ourselves. We had a blender and everything. Zzz. Yeah, good stuff. Molts. Molts are good, too. I used to love the McDonald's like hat like mixed back and forth with the shamrock shake and the chocolate shake. Oh yeah. That was super good. Yeah. Thin mint shake. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm, piece of pits. A piece of pit? I think it's a piece of pie. The oh. pie shake of cherries. There's a place in Kansas City that does that. It's a Town Topic Hamburgers. It's a little bitty place um, just down the street from the convention center. It's like, I don't know, about a mile walk down that down Broadway. And they do pie shakes. So good. 
Congrats. Woohoo! Yeah, after you talked about cake so much, Dane had to buy had to make me a chocolate I cake. I did make a cake. It was great though because he was like, I don't have the stuff to make icing, and I was like, I don't like icing anyway, and so it's been great. Actually, I do have the stuff. I could have made cream cheese chocolate frosting. Well, next time. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> so, think... yeah, basically, though, that's a great way to get people to, to talk and fight the last. Like, we all have opinions and thoughts. It's a good job. <laughs> On the fast food and which ones are good and which ones aren't. Um, yeah. Oh, God, don't get started on pizza. Wars have literally, literally been fought over that. I'm pretty sure that's what the Civil War was about. All, All right. right, guys. Right, Have a great evening. Thank you for hanging out. Yeah. We will talk to you all later. Ish. I love bad food, like bad for you food. I am made of bad food. Um. Yeah. Just. On that note. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.